love music, rock stars, guitars, being a DJ. That led to me working on the number one comedy of all time. Now I do warm-up and stand-up. I combined comedy and music. It makes me happy. That's why this is the Scott Blue Brown Capital, a talk show about comedy and music. Tonight on Scott Blue Grind's Happy Hour Comedy and Music Talk Show. We got Maestro Vince Womack. We're going to discuss his first day and first year of teaching for the love of trumpet. Choosing to teach the University of Michigan days. The Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation with Eddie Van Halen. An episode of the Fab Four. Vince working with me on Friends. He asks me a question and I give Vince a challenge. Let's learn more about Vince Womack. This week on Scott Bluegrass Happy Hour. Musician, award-winning music educator, working with Eddie Van Halen, my high school music teacher, the maestro, Vince Womack. If anyone was to ask me who is my very favorite teacher of all time, it's Vince Womack. Um, I, uh, I was at Canoga Park High School. I've always been in every music thing. There was a guy named Ivan Eugenio, who was a music teacher. He was really into vocal ensembles. I wanted to play guitar, but I was at the Christmas show going, Do you see what I see? I had to do all the bass parts. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And so that he passes away, we have the rest of the year, no music. And then the start of the next year, they didn't really have anything. And I was dying. Then I show up, Vince Womack is in the office. He's about 21. I'm about 18. And I'm like, I want to play guitar in your marching band. And you're like, you put down your thing. You're like, play something. So I tried to be all impressive, play something classical. You're like, play some stones. <laughs> and then he, then he just said, I, right, I'll check it out. No, some people would be like, I don't think so, but you're like, oh, I'll check it out, which is so huge for me. And then we had such a great time. So, can you tell me a little bit? Boy, that's a long setup. Huh? <laughs> and then, so tell me a little bit about that. You just you graduated college, you show up, it's your first time teaching Canoga Park High School, 1987 88 year. That's right. I tell you, um. I didn't know a whole lot. I mean, I, I learned a lot in college and I had taken a lot of knowledge into college with me about music. I mean, I knew how to arrange music and so forth. But when I arrived at Canoga Park High School, I was really, really green. <laughs> and I had no idea the wealth of things I was about to learn. But, you know, in, in regards to you, Scott, uh, when I met you and you said you played guitar, I had already come to the realization that we only had about 15 people in the marching band. So I was thinking, this dude, we, we're going to give him a suit. I don't care what he plays. So we'll work it out, right? So uh, Oak Park High School obviously will always be incredibly near and dear to my heart because it was where 
I cut my teeth. It was weird. It was where I, I humbled myself to the point where I don't know what I'm doing. Well, how am I going to figure this out? I'm in Southern California. I'm hanging out with all these kids who are pretty much my age, but they all dress funny. And what's up with the hair? You know, I mean, you guys were a trip. There was a whole new level of ugly, man. I mean, the fashion and the, and, and, and the, and, and the hair situation. It was a band of real characters. We had, and talent, too, for for quickly being assembled, I think. Yes. We made it work. You were very talented, my friend. You were a lightning rod in many ways. I mean, people were attracted to you. I mean, we didn't have to worry about an audience. Oh, Our- I loved it because... I knew every inch of the music room, the stage above it, behind it. And so I would be in class and all of a sudden someone would walk up with a note for the teacher and they go, oh, Scott, they need you in the music room. And I'm like, Woo-hoo! <laughs> you got me out of a lot of boring, boring stuff. And we had Tom Liu on drums and Lou. Dan Walsh and Darius on bass. Dan Walsh on keys. And they, and they basically, yeah. they look like Duran Duran. They had the the hair, the outfits. I looked like I was, you know, trying to be in Motley Crue and Van Halen, trying to be David Lee Roth all the time. But it was the man. It was a great group. And then we had no good uniforms. It was that that back room was full of scraps. And so we did a tour of the malls. Remember, we I played remember. every mall. And oh god, uh, but we raised a lot of money. We got some uniforms, right? We got uniforms my first year. We wore we wore track team sweatshirts for the first half of the year that yeah, we, we performed yeah. in sweatshirts from the from the track yeah. team. Oh, do you have and a green from, sweatshirt? Yeah, bring it. <laughs> yeah. And then I had the challenge of playing guitar and being an electric guy in an all acoustic band. And uh, I was just telling my wife about this. The very first game, I borrowed uh, a really cheap wireless for wireless hookup for my guitar. It was a really cheap one, you know, like the forty nine ninety nine eighty back then, right? And so I hook up my guitar. My, I'm really far from my amp, so there's a delay. You guys are in a completely different part of the song. And then I had the coach come. Remember this? The coach comes running up to me with faces red. Shut that beep and beep beep beep. Because my wireless was on all the frequency the coaches and the in the score box were on, and so they're talking. And all of a sudden, <laughs> we knocked out all the coaches. Yes, I'll never forget that. That was great. <laughs> but I'll remember though when you came back as an alum for homecoming. Yeah, and. and you worked it out where the custodian drove you out on the cart in the middle of wipeout and you played a five minute solo to end the whole show. <laughs> I mean, you were Stevie Ray Vaughan, right? <laughs> and you finished, you held on this long note, you ended the song and the cart drove off and took you with it. It was, it was good time. It, because you let me get away with that stuff, which is so huge. Cause in your lives, you got people that are like, nah, if you want to do something that people, because my thing is, I don't care if anybody else has done it or I, like I, if I have an idea, I just do it. If you wait for everyone else to say, okay, okay, it never gets done. So I just do it. And you let me, and I'll never forget my homecoming year. I won homecoming. I went out with the band, opened up the show, back into my tux, came out, won the homecoming, came back, changed again, played the halftime show, went back into my tux. Man, one of the greatest nights of my life, man. <laughs> How about graduation? Do you remember the end of graduation? Oh, dude. It cleared out the whole stadium. (laughs) That's right. Do you remember the song? Fame. Fame. (laughs) Fame. I remember songs. That's my thing. (laughs) Talk about a recessional. Uh, The whole place was packed, and when we finished that song, empty. It was empty. (laughs) And then we're all seniors, and we have all our gear on the football field. We're like... Will someone watch this? We're like, wait, mom, don't leave. <laughs> that was, dude, and, and that almost the whole jazz band was seniors. That's right. That's Ta- exactly right. You, Benny, Ton, Rafferty, Scott Rafferty. Yeah, for yeah, Rafferty. Yeah. Gonna put it up for Rafferty. 
That was one of the greatest times. Ooh, this one's not water. It's happy hour. I'll never forget when we started jazz band, all mm-hmm. of a sudden Vince walked out of the office with his trumpet in his hand and crushed, blew us all away. What made you play trumpet? My big brother played trumpet. However, when I got into school, he suggested I play French horn because we had enough trumpet players in the family. My big brother, who's 10 years older, and my next brother, who's seven years older, they both played trumpet. So... Me coming along seven years later, uh, it was a just, it was a statement in just, hey, we have enough trumpet players in the family. So I went out to French horn. And I, uh, I love French horn. Beautiful instrument. I struggled. And I would put the French horn down and pick up the trumpet and serve everybody else what was going on. So finally, uh, coming out of fifth grade, going into sixth grade, uh, my, my best friend was going to be in the high school band in the sixth grade. His dad was principal in high school, so he, he had a connection. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. And so I realized then I couldn't mess around hanging out on French horn anymore. I had to get with the trumpet. I had to get good right away so that I could yeah, get into the high yeah, school, yeah. right? You know, where all the cute girls were. So uh, I started trumpet. I would hear my brother playing, and he played solos in the high school band when he was in high school. So I knew that if I was going to do music, I had to be good enough to uh, you know to be at the top because that's the example that was shown to me how did you figure out that you would be able to withstand the intensity the sounds the enormity of what it really is to be a high school music teacher with marching bands and ensembles how did you know you were capable of it because it's a very difficult thing to do Right. Yeah. It's like herding cats and squirrels. Mm. Ouch. Well, you know, I, I did, um, benefit from, from an excellent, uh, an outstanding education at the university of Michigan. Uh, I think they prepared me really well, uh, to go out into a uh, community and to, uh, and to provide the best music instruction possible, but still you don't know what you don't know. And when it's, when the whistle's around your neck and it's your responsibility, you know, you just don't know how you're going to go with the flow and to handle live fire. Mm-hmm. So exactly. uh, I, I didn't know, Scott, I really didn't know. I mean, <laughs> you can tell me about me more than me because <laughs> you saw me day one. You know, I'll tell you, here's, here's my observation. First off, you were just so cool and relatable and uh, not a lot of teachers, definitely the music department wasn't like that before. And, but you're humble enough to at sometimes you just go, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Cause that's where a lot of like leaders of all, of all kinds of leaders, if you don't know, it's mm-hmm. okay to say, I don't know. You don't have to be like, I, it's me and it's me. Cause it's me, me, me. Sometimes you have to just go, I don't know. So you reached out, you networked, you listened to me, you listened to other teachers, and but you knew how to put on a show. You knew what was up, and um, you raised my game big time because because you gave me room. It mm. wasn't like I'll never forget. I'd come to class, and we would do a jam, and I'd get like 16, 24 bars just to sit there and solo, which is I was all <laughs> about soloing. Uh-huh. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, we had that song, Attitude, and it had this bridge that had a lot of chords in it, right? I think it was B flat, a G, an F sharp, all the stuff. And I'm a rocker, E, A, and D, that's my. And so it was the, you know, you have to do a solo over this bridge, which was a lot of chords that was out of my, at that time, wheelhouse. So I had to sit there, I took a, uh, a picture of the guitar neck with all the notes on it. And I'm like, okay, we're B. I had to find all the B flats. I had to find all the F sharps. I had to find, oh. I saw, I, I, I literally it was the first time I worked out a solo to a chord change. And I'll never forget the next day. You're like, okay. And I nailed it. And you like, you stopped the band and said, do it again. 
<laughs> because you gave me the space to not say we're playing this sheet sheet of music, play it like it is. You gave me yeah. a pocket. Hey, come up with a guitar solo here. That's like the dream assignment for me. And it was literally was the first time I wrote my own solo, not just hitting every note in the book, but to a, uh, a chord progression. I wrote that song for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you and then guys we went inspired. to the recording studio, remember? That's right. I took you guys out to, I don't know, Ontario or Claremont, <laughs> someplace to a studio, and we, and we recorded it. Yeah. It's so school of rock. Jump in the van. <laughs> I remember that session. I wish I had that recorded somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure it's on a cassette tape. Uh, you know what a cassette tape is? Yeah, I have I have a stack of them melting in my mom's garage <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> I've got that on a cassette tape somewhere. Me too. I had a I had a jazz band live. We were set up like outside the music room. Yeah, like on that little lawn area. Yes, and I listened to it a hundred times because I had some good solos. But you're just five times. You're like, get with the program, Benny. <laughs> Benny Castaneda. <clears throat> I love Benny, man. But uh, so funny. I remember that. Benny, get with the program. I've always seen those great pictures of you in your marching band uniform from the University of Michigan. Tell me about your glory days in college in those big football games playing in the marching band. Oh, my God. University of Michigan, over 100 and something thousand people in the house every mm. football game. You, you come out of a tunnel entering the stadium and the crowd's going crazy and you're playing uh, Hail to the Victors and and you're marching with your knees all the way up to your face. Uh, you're being challenged physically like you've never been challenged before. Um, you know, it was really the greatest time of my life. And it really set me up for working hard and, and, uh, and, and helping others to try and set high goals and expectations for themselves. I would not trade my University of Michigan experience for anything. Who go was blue. the teacher? Who was the teacher? Oh, yeah, go blue. I had a lot of teachers, but I can tell you um, uh, H. Robert Reynolds was my conductor and mentor, very much like a father to me. Um, and he, uh, is also on faculty at University of Southern California. Uh, so I've had uh, a long relationship with him even after college. Oh, wow. uh, but, uh, there were so many people who've made such a, a, a formative impact on how I see education, how I see music and what my place is in terms of giving it to people. And, oh, I'm going to tell you something. You make you real proud, Vince. Uh, at the 10-year reunion, I don't want to say what year. Okay. Uh, uh, 88, 88 Canoga Hunter. And in Hollywood, that's 2008. 2008. And uh, every single person from the music department, college degree. Every single one of them. Football Love team. It. Not so much. Every from band to vocal to every single one college degree. That's hot. It's very hot. hot. I was proud. Let's say something right now, Scott. Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation is the greatest thing since sliced bread. It really is. I mean, they are putting together teams of capable people, motivated people to go out and help schools and communities to uh, to elevate their communities through music. And when they don't have enough instruments to keep the program going because of something like COVID-19 and people can't share instruments and, uh, you know, and the systems are breaking down, Mr. Holland's Opus, you know, they rush in there like they're an ambulance, man. And they, they, they are doing such incredible mission work all over this country. And I'm fortunate to have been connected with them. And I'm fortunate to, to be a recipient. Uh, and, and, and many of my students in, in the community are, are, are better because of them. So 
hats off to Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation, but that's a part of the solution because kids yeah. can't play instruments now. They can't. I was just they thinking can't. about that today. Slobbering into them. No. Wonderful, Mr. Holland's Opus. I saw it in effect. My... I know you work with one of my favorite guitar players. My family's of Dutch origin. I grew up in the Valley. There's a guy from Holland named Eddie Van Halen. who grew up in Pasadena and I've read a bunch of their books. Van Halen used to play at Glendale high school and Valley college and Glendale college and all these places. Eddie Van Halen donated guitars to both of my sons, his middle school and his high school. And he, when he was playing guitar, my son, Stevie Ray Bluegrind, he, um, he was in a class, kind of like a club. And of course I had, you know, he had one of my guitars to take. I bought him on his own guitar. And there was a boy that showed up every day. I would be like, Hey, can, can, you know, can I, can I, and people would let him play a little bit and this and that. Then, uh, Custom EVH Eddie Van Halen guitar shows up, and the teacher goes, "This is the one you could play now." And I, I'll never forget. We he had I think it was his winter music show. My son was playing violin in the winter show in middle school, and um, the, t the the head conductor held up an EVH and talked about it. my favorite guitar player donated it. I'm like, ah. Oh. Can you tell me a little bit? And then the same thing at his high school. Glendale High School got some uh, EVH, too. Can you tell me a little bit about working with the most amazing guitar player, I think, on the planet, Eddie Van Halen? Scott, uh, Eddie is, um, is is a special dude, man. Um, he's so full of love. He and his wife, Janie. I, I was privileged to meet them uh, during an event for Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation, I, I think I had given a speech during one of what we call their friend raisers, where they're, you know, uh, creating a, a, a group of capable friends to be able to make a difference in our communities. And Eddie was one of them. And I met him at that event and he and I talked all night, you know, because, you know, Eddie, you know, Eddie doesn't always like to be where people thinks he should be, which is on stage talking and schmoozing and that kind of thing. And so um, I, when I met him, I was just in one of those, you know, I was I think I had a student or two with me. So uh, my conversation was just very real, very straight to the point. You know, we're hanging out you're talking about my life, talking about his life, talking about our lives and the similarities. And, and we just had a very, very deep connection. And ultimately what happened, uh, his wife was there too. And we had a great night. Ultimately what happened after that night, Eddie had decided, you know what? I need to go out and see this guy. I, I need to go to his school. I need to go to his community. And so Eddie and Janie put together a low key situation where they would come and surprise visit me and my students. And uh, they, they, they showed up, you know, they brought an amp or two and brought a bunch of Christmas presents for the kids. Oh, and oh, so uh, we've been tight since. Oh, man. Tell me, I, I saw a picture where he plugged in and was ripping with your kids. Can you tell me about that? I wish, man, I, I wish I was a fly on that wall. It'd have been so cool. He wasn't going to play. <laughs> they had to let the school district know that they were coming. You know, but uh, but he had also said to everyone, I, I'm not going to be playing. You know, this is before the tour, the last tour, but he wasn't going to play because he knew that that would be a lot of uh, attention surrounding him playing. Mm. Yeah. Well, you have to know it didn't take long. One of my students asked a question and Eddie is responding to the qu question and he stops mid sentence. He just walks over there, picks up the guitar, <laughs> starts thrashing. Hey, Paul, you ready for the fave fall? Forget Sgt. Pepper, we got Sgt. Womack. 32 years ago today, Womack told Scott's band to play. He's a maestro, not a sergeant. Maestro sounds cool. Let's suit up. Vince's fave, fave fall. <laughs> Hey Vince, who's your fave four trumpet players? Wynton Marcellus, Miles Davis, uh, Louis Armstrong, 
Uh, Sean Jones. Hmm. John Faddis. Hey, that's five, but it's cool, man. Who's your favorite drummers? Um, Omar Hakim. Um, Max Roach. Um, Billy Higgins. Yeah, Billy Higgins, for sure. Uh, one more. Um, Buddy Rich. Who's your five four bass players? Lewis Johnson, Marcus Miller, um, Jaco Pistorius, mm. um, Larry Graham from Sly yeah. and the Family. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then later playing with Prince. Yes. Who's your four favorite guitar players? Jimi Hendrix, uh, Prince. Mm, yeah. Um, I like Buddy Guy. Um, one more. Um, you know, there, there's a guitarist. His name's Earl Clue. He's from Detroit. He does a lot of acoustic stuff. But I, I really like Earl Clue. What's your five full records albums? Um, Stevie Wonder, Song in the Key of Life. Um... Earth, Wind, and Fire, I Am. Mm. Um, weather Report, uh, Heavy Weather. Um, I would say Prince, Controversy. Ooh, early Prince. Who's your fave four acts? We'd be surprised to know. Panic at the Disco. Boy George and Culture Club. <laughs> um, you might not be surprised, but I really love James Taylor. Mm, yeah. Um, but growing up, there was a country singer. His name is Charlie Pride. I love Charlie Pride, the country singer. Who's your fave four sports teams? The Los Angeles Lakers, the Detroit Tigers, um, I'm going to die two days earlier than I should, but the Detroit Lions, Andrew. that's definitely going to take two days off my life, <laughs> and um, what I said, the Lakers, the Lions, the Tigers, and uh, what sport did I miss? College football? Michigan Wolverines. Boom. What's your favorite tasty munchies? My four munchies. I like famous, famous chocolate chip cookies with pecans. I love a good, what they call, Snickers bar. Um, I like Doritos, man. I'm a freak for some Doritos. Um, probably in terms of a snack, uh, my last, my fourth, would probably be Twizzlers. Mm. I like all that. Vince's Faithful. There was a time after my tenure at Canoga uh, that I hired your band. I was in charge of the concerts at CSUN. And I hired your band to come. And then I was working on the TV show Friends. And I was working with a guy named Jim Bentley. And he goes, do you know any talented musicians we could put in the audience? And I'm like, I know. And Vince Womack was my first call. And uh, can you tell me what that was like for you? That was so much fun to have you there. Oh, my goodness. L let's just cut right to the big chase here. <laughs> Um, I don't know how many Friends episodes I did with you, but I remember this one day you had me play some Chuck Mangione Feels So Good. Because it was in and, the show. It was in the show that week. Yeah, it was in the show that week. And the thing that I remember most is that after the show, you had me hanging out with you and uh, Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox, Arquette. Uh, and so at some point, <laughs> Jennifer Anderson, you're standing right there. She looks up at me and she goes, you have the sweetest sound. Aww. 
Now, I got to tell you, I went home to my girlfriend and I told her for like three hours about everything that was <laughs> three hours. And, uh, you know, she didn't break up with me. But let me tell you something. I still talk about that. Can I ask you a quick question, though? Hey, who did you take to the prom? Oh, the prom was my girlfriend at the time. But for the winter dance, I took Sharon Case. So that's what the you're winter asking about. Dance. Yes. Yes. Want to hear that yes. story? Uh, here's, here's the story. Here's the inside scoop. Okay, I won Homecoming King. And my girlfriend at the time was kind of like, oh, I'm a rocker. So she didn't dance with me. I'm like, I'm the king and you ain't going to dance. That's like October. And then here comes the winter dance. I'm walking over. I kind of got out early. I was kind of walking over to the lunch area. And there's Sharon Case. And I'm like, hey, going to the winter dance? She goes, I don't know. I'm like, oh, we should go together. She goes, yeah, that'd be great. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I, I broke up with him. Okay, this, I'm not like this now. I'm happily married. It's going to be 15 years in two weeks. Thank you. Round of applause. Boom. Happy anniversary. Oh, oh, thanks, Dad. But I broke up with my girlfriend at the time for two weeks. <laughs> Took Sharon to the dance. Oh, man. Unreal. Un I really admired her because I'm an independent thinker. I, and she had already had such a great career. She had been to Japan and she had agents and she was doing stuff. So the more I got to know about her, I was impressed. I'm like, wow, I thought I was hitting this girl's hitting. Yeah. And, um, and she's a talented actress and she's so beautiful and I hope she's doing good. I hope she's doing good through all this. Yeah. and schmeechen what's up with the vince womack tunes <laughs> vince womack tunes you know you mentioned milton port and milton used to send me messages hey you know you know send me some of your music uh what's up with the vince womack the vince womack music is on the shelf right now hmm. it's it's on the shelf um you know when i came to los angeles i came here for the Vince Womack experience. I came here to write music and to perform music and to find what the world had for me through performing and, and, and through music in, in general. Teaching wasn't my first uh, option when I came here, but it was quickly the option that I chose. You're just so good at it. You're just so great at it. I wasn't intending to stay when I met you guys. <laughs> that wasn't my deal. But I tried to scare you away. <laughs> But as you know, I tried to find a way to make what I wanted to do a part of what I was actually doing. And I wrote music for you guys. We played music. We played music in so many different venues and, and in front of so many people. Um, I have a challenge I met, for you. I, I have a challenge. A student challenging please. the teacher. Challenging me. From everything I've heard today, yes. you are about to burst at the seams with message hmm. write the song write the song not to be a big hit hmm. write the song and then maybe when school's back you could say what you want to say with that song and say when you wrote it that's my challenge to you write that song for yourself because hmm. you know sure. it's, it's a great therapy to write a song about something come on you break up with the girl you write that song, and you're like, oh, at least I got that good song out of it. <laughs> right. You're good. That's my challenge. That's your two week plan. Lay it All down. Right. Lay it That's down. my two week plan. Two week plan. Write a song. Right. Pen and paper, write some verses, find those sweet chords. When I write the song, can I come back and play it for you? Yes, 100%.